Hello and welcome to the lesson where I'm going to be walking you through the examples of code that were in the chapter that covers where, order by, and fetch. Now, um, if you've gone through the reading and you've actually, you know, read through some of these things, if anything's confusing, again, that's why I'm here to just kind of walk you through the examples and show you a little bit about how, you know, the way I go about trying to learn from these examples. Sometimes I'll even play around and alter the code itself just to kind of better understand it. Um, in these first few examples, we're just trying to show you the ways that you can use comparison operators. So that would be things like equals, uh, greater than, greater than or equals to, or not even even not equals to. Um, so let's just run these really quickly. Select star from vendors where the vendor state equals um, IA. Um, pretty basic, right? We're just saying where the vendor state equals a string of text. Um, you know, always remember to, if it is text, that we do have to have ticks or, you know, single apostrophes around it. So you do actually have to run this because it is text with, uh, you know, you have to have those ticks. If you run that without, you know, it's not going to work. Um, you run it with apostrophes, it, it will. Um, the other thing that we wanted to show you is that, you know, you can actually add in expressions um, in the where clause. So I could go in here and say, hey, where the invoice total um, itself is greater than zero, but I can also go in here and say where the invoice total minus the payment total minus the credit total is greater than zero. And if you look at this first row, you'll see that if you know invoice total minus payment total minus credit total is actually going to equal zero. So this first invoice shouldn't show up. And let's run this and see what happens. Sure enough, that one actually disappears. Now the only ones showing up are the ones that have an invoice total minus payment minus credit still greater than zero. And from a business standpoint, that means that we have an invoice total, but our payment and credit uh, doesn't add up to that total. So that means we still owe that money. Uh, so yeah, you can use an expression and you can use greater than. Uh, you can also use less than if you want as well. Um, you can compare one column to an expression. So if, uh, if you want to notice this, um, you know, this is only pulling back where the invoice total is greater than the uh, payment and credit total. It's also a variation on the previous query. Uh, so logically, it's just a different way of writing it. Um, but what this is saying is, you know, if you, you go and look at this, um, let's say I want to just add in the invoice ID and I want to go ahead and put in these other columns. Um, and let's take a look at them. I'm going to go and actually grab and grab the invoice ID, the invoice total, and I'm going to grab the payment total plus credit total. Let's run that and see what happens. And so what you see here, let's actually give it an alias and call it, um, um, we'll go ahead and call it pay cred total. Um, and so what you'll see here is that uh, it's pulling everywhere the invoice total is greater than the payment total. And you'll see, um, you know, sure enough, uh, that's the case, right? Invoice total is greater. Um, if I took this out, and I can comment the code out, which is the little dash symbol, uh, if, I, if I run that, you'll see here that this invoice total uh, versus credit uh, total, uh, pay credit total is not greater than. So, uh, you know, again, it's just another way of showing you you can compare columns to columns, you can compare an expression to a value, you can compare a column to an expression. Um, you can also, um, you know, um, look at, uh, you know, greater than or equals to. So again, this is just a, another way to compare the data. So this is pulling everywhere the invoice date is less than or equal to May 31st, which means everything before May 31st. Um, and you'll see here that's the case. Uh, the last one was just, you know, if you want to find everywhere where the credit total is not equal to zero, um, that's what this uh, one here means. It means it's not less than, it's not greater than, uh, it's just another way of writing not equals to. In other SQL tools that I've used, uh, the exclamation mark uh, uh, equals actually also works, and it seems to work also in Oracle as well. That's just another way of saying not equals to. Uh, looks like an angry equals to, I guess. Um, so let's keep going through these. Um, now what we want to do is walk through the examples of the logical operators and, or, and not. And we've talked about how uh, when you use these, they typically will go in the order of not, and, or, or if you're using them and all together. Um, so in this first statement, if you look at it, um, 
it looks like uh, we are searching where the vendor state equals New Jersey and the vendor city equals Springfield. Now we didn't get anything back. And if that ever happens, let's just do this. Let's just get rid of the where clause and let's just run it by itself. So let's go look really quickly. Um, if I go and look at New Jersey, uh, in fact, what we can even do is this is where using SQL can get, um, let's just take this out and run New Jersey. And if I look at this, you'll see, well, there is no uh, city of Springfield. Um, so that makes sense, right? We actually say, is there a vendor state of New Jersey and the vendor city is Springfield? So it has to meet both criteria. There is nothing. But if I grab Fairfield, let's actually throw that in here. Let's run it. And sure enough, that one actually does return a record, right? So we where pull me all the vendors where the state is New Jersey and the vendor city is Fairfield. Now let's run this next one here. It's got an or statement, uh, an or operator. So what is what is that going to do? Um, so let's think about before we even run it, what would happen here? So it's going to pull everywhere the vendor state is New Jersey. And we know that there are, you know, by running this last statement, we know there are four cities or four vendors. Um, in New Jersey. But then it also says, or the vendor city is Springfield. And so what that means is it's not only gonna pull, if you're if you're in New Jersey, it's gonna pull it. But if you're also in Springfield, uh, it will pull those as well. And Springfield could be, I mean, I don't know if that's, could be Springfield, Missouri, could be Springfield where the Simpsons are from. I don't know, like that could be multiple Springfield. So let's run this statement, see what we get back. And it looks like, uh, again, it's only pulling New Jersey. Uh, so my next question would be, you know, not even knowing uh, what's behind this data, is I'm going to go just see if there's any vendor cities in Springfield. And there's not, um, which I think is a funny example. But let's just do something like this. Let's go and grab, um, I think there is a Los Angeles uh, in here. So let's go and run this statement. Is there anything from New Jersey and Los Angeles? No. But... What if I changed this and ran the statement anywhere you are from New Jersey or the city is Los Angeles and oh, there is no Los Angeles. Is it or is it? No, it's not loss. Let's just go run a select star from vendors really quickly. All right, so let's do Sacramento. So if you are vendors are in New Jersey or Sacramento. And so what you'll see here. Um, if I can order this uh, by, I'll do this order by vendor state. Um, now when I run this, what you'll see is here's all of the records from Sacramento and then the rest of them are from New Jersey. And that makes sense, right? You're going to either pull it if they are from New Jersey or the city is Sacramento. And so it's going to pull both. So just remembering what these logical operators do, you know, and versus or, or says either one of these pass, I'm going to show it. And says both of them have to pass, and I will show only if both the um, criteria are met. The not operator is actually really simple. Uh, I don't know why the book shows this example because I would never logically think about it like this. So I'm going to show you this first example, this the second example first, and it says where the invoice total is less than five thousand and the invoice date is. Uh, before July 1st. So what this is saying is I want to have everything where the invoice total is less than 5,000 and the invoice date is prior to July. Um, what it also shows you here is that you could also go in here and say where the invoice total is greater than or uh, equal to 5,000 or not. I think this is ridiculous, actually. I don't know why the book shows you this example. I think the better example would be is let's do something, you know, like um, let's say I want to take, um, you know, let's just do something simple. Let's say I want to find all the invoices um, where the invoice total is greater than or equal to 5,000. So here you go. I see it. Now, let's just, to do that differently, I could go in here and say, hey, where it's not, uh, greater than 5,000. And that is the equivalent of saying something like this. That's the equivalent of saying, okay, where it is less than 5,000. And I think this is a, a much more clear example. So, um, and there will be other times down the road when we're going to use the not um, 
logical operator and it's going to make uh, you know perfect sense. Maybe you want to say where it's not in this list or something like that. But the not operator is just basically a way of saying, hey, the opposite of whatever this uh, criteria is. So again, if I want to say, hey, if it's gr less than 5,000, I write it this way. If I want to say it's not less um, than 5,000, um, then I would, you know, basically do the opposite. Um, of whatever it's looking for. So the not operator can be pretty useful, especially when we're using the in clause later on. And the last example here that I wanted to show you is just reminding you that the um, kind of the PEMDAS rules of, you know, parentheses uh, then uh, actually will always override whatever the logical operators you are. So just uh, you're using. So, um, so when you are using something uh, like this, you'll see here that it says, invoice date is greater than May, so it's after May 1st, or the invoice total is greater than 500, and this. So when you run this, what's going to happen is the, the test, uh, so there's kind of three tests that are happening here. Is it's looking for this, or this, and this. So the way that, uh, the point of showing you this is that SQL is going to evaluate the and before it evaluates the or. So it's going to test this first, and then it's going to test this next thing. So what will end up being returned here is anything that's got an invoice date after May 1st, or anything that's got an invoice total greater than 500 and um, a balance due, which is what this basically is, of greater than zero. Um, and if you want to, you know, if you wanted it to evaluate uh, both of these first and then the next one, then the way you'd have to do that is add parentheses in here. And in in some cases, I would actually probably put this all in one line just to make it a little bit more readable, um, and make it look kind of like, oh, sorry, make it look kind of like this. So now I kind of can clearly know, okay, this right here is going to be evaluated first, um, and then it will also be evaluated with this. So, um, and, and that would get, you know, different results. Uh, this is going to say, hey, it's the invoice date is gr after uh, May 1st, or, um, you know, it's got a total of 500 regardless of the date. And so you'll see here, there's like a June 4th, uh, June 14th, um, that's getting pulled. Um, but it's also got to meet this other, you know, criteria here. So just again, you remember to use parentheses when you really want to clearly state um, you know, two things to happen at one time. So the in operator is a really useful, um, you know, um, uh, way to shorten your code. Um, for example, if I wanted to say, I want to pull all the invoices where the term is one, two, or three, uh, this is how we could do it. You just say terms ID is in this list. Um, and you'll see here that it was able to do that. Now, if we didn't have the terms, uh, sorry, if we didn't have the in operator, the only way we could do that is we would have to go in here and say where terms ID equals one, um, or the terms ID equals uh, two, or the terms ID equals three. And that would work just fine too. It will give you the same 94 rows as if, you know, if, just as the same as uh, doing this, right? And just saying if it's in this list. And sure enough, 94 rows that we get back. So in operator is really great. Uh, remember, again, if you're using numbers, you don't have to put ticks around it, the single apostrophes. If you are doing text, you can do that. Um, you, you do have to put ticks around it. So it, let's just run this first uh, example here, and I'm going to take the not operator out of it. And you'll see that it says, pull me all the vendors where the vendor state is in this list. So again, if I were to write this out without the in operator, that would be really painful. I'd say really painful, not that painful, but... Uh, I'd have to go in here and say California um, or vendor state, uh, you know, equals Nevada and, or, you know, and again, if once you start copy pasting the same thing over and over again, there's just got to be a better way to write it. And so that's where the in operator comes in. Um, so you can go in and just say, hey, it's in this list. And if you ever want to flip that and just say, hey, I want to pull everything that is not California, Nevada or Oregon, that's where the not operator is really useful. So I use the not operator a lot when I'm using the in clause. And so this is now going to pull everything that is not California, Nevada, Oregon. And sure enough, if you want to check that, um, 
let's just order by vendor state. Can't spell. And now you'll go through here. I don't see California. I don't see Nevada. And sure enough, that is exactly what we pulled back. Um, the in operator also will get useful around subqueries. And I know, again, I've mentioned this before in previous lessons that uh, we are going to talk about subqueries. But um, it's just pointing out that you know we're teaching the in operator uh, as part of the where clause. But you will see it later on when we get to subqueries. So when we say something like this, like, hey, I want to select all the vendors that from invoices um, where the invoice date is um, you know, equal to May 1st. So if I run that on its own just by itself, let's just do that really quickly. And um, I don't have to delete this, but I'm just making it look pretty. So let's just um, run this. You'll see that it actually is going to get a list of vendors, 121, 123. And basically, if I were to, uh, a subquery you'll learn will actually run and it will replace this query with the values that it returns. So um, what we're now saying is if I want to select all the invoices where the vendor ID is in this list and, oh, sorry, always end your stuff with a semicolon if you, so you can run just the single statement. And sure enough, you'll see, here's all the invoices for vendors 121 and 123. And this is no different. So just to kind of get your head around subqueries a little bit, no, no point in holding off to learn this stuff later. This statement here will return the uh, invoices for vendor ID 121 and 123. So what th as you saw, this little query in here is going to return these values. And it basically is running them and then it replaces these values inside of this um, you know set of parentheses and it's it's the exact equivalent of running hey give me all the invoices where the vendor id is in this list of 121 123 and um, so yeah very valuable to use the in clause when you are saying hey it's in this list of hard-coded values which we saw it, saw it do up here but you can also replace these hard-coded values with another uh, single column subquery and that can be, you know, really cool. Um, so um, that's the in clause. Let's talk about the between operator. Uh, between operator is pretty simple. Um, it's the equivalent of going in and doing something. So let's let's actually think about how we do this, you know, um, uh, without the between clause. Um, so what I want to do is I want to find all the invoices with an invoice date between May first and May thirty first. So one way we could do that is we could we could go in here and we could say, I want to pull all the invoices where the invoice date is greater than or equal to May 1st and the invoice date is less than or equal to May 31st. So I could run it and do that. And that is going to return 70 rows of data. And you'll see all of these are in May uh, between, uh, you know, within the month of May. Um, but again, if you're having to write stuff over and over again, there could be a way to do it easier. And so that's where the between operator comes in. So we just simply say between May 1st and May 31st. And if we now run that, you'll see we get 70 rows. All of our records are between May 1st and May 31st. The one thing to point out is that the between operator will include the lower and upper bounds. So you may be thinking, if I run this, is it only going to pull May 2nd through May 30th? And the answer is no. It's actually the equivalent of saying equals to or greater and less than or, uh, or less than or equal to. Um, so the between does include. So if I say, you know, if I if I were to say between 1 and 10, it's going to pull back everything that, you know, is between, you know, not only equal to 1, uh, but greater than 1, up to 10, even equal to 10. Um, and then you can even do a not before it, and you can use this not operator a lot. Um, but if I want to, let's just take this not out for a second and run it. I want to pull everything where the zip code is between 13600 and 13799. So you'll see, sure enough, that's what it's doing. But if I want to say, um, and let's actually do this, let's order by vendor zip code. All right, so that now we can see it's 93600, 
uh, to 9.3, you know, between 9.3, um, So if I say not, now let's go look at our zip codes. And sure enough, it is everything outside of the uh, 93600. And as soon as we got here, 93600 and 93799. So it's everything above and below that. So the not operator, you can just go play around with that. Um, you know, add it in when you're using the in clause. You can add it in when you're using the between clause as well. And uh, you can also uh, use the between with an expression. I mean, really, the exp uh, you know you can use an expression in a where clause. So just like I can say, hey, you know, where the you know invoice minus payment minus credit is greater than zero. We could also do something like, hey, I want to pull everything where the invoice total minus payment minus credit is between 200 and 500. So if we run that, it's going to hand me everything that is between that. And so invoice total minus payment minus credit, it's going to total, the, it's going to get these, uh, you know, create that total. And it's only going to pull back if it's between uh, 224 and 313. I just want to for the heck of it, just update that. Sure enough, you know, you can actually see that it's pulling back everything that's between 200 and um, 1,000. And again, not just this column, it's, it's this minus this minus this um, is what it's pulling back. Um, so uh, the um, other thing you can use is, you know, it's very useful with dates. So you can actually go in and uh, pull information where the you know a date is between. Um, this is really you know helpful when you want to compare, let's say, between one value and a an expression. So this is kind of saying instead of putting the expression on this side of the operator, it's actually saying it's between uh, one value and a calculated value. Now, if I run this, I don't think it's actually going to give me back anything, and that's because these due dates and the uh, table are all from like 2014 and we're recording this in 2019 at the very end of the 2019 year so um, so it's not going to find any data that's between 2019 but basically what this is uh, doing is it's it's going to grab uh, so if today is the 17th of uh, December it's going to go and pull um, um, anything between and let's just actually just so you're aware I'm going to pull sys date, and I'm going to pull the sys date plus 30. And I'm going to go pull this from the dual table because that's we have to use the dual table when we're using expressions. So it's going to pull everything but with a sys, uh, with a invoice date between the 17th and the 16th of January 2020. And just because our data is old, it does not have that. Um, it will not uh, have anything show up. But uh, what we could always do is go in there and uh, update the invoice dates and make the date more data more current, and it would actually return something. But this is just showing you could compare between two hard coded values. Or we could even compare an expression between two card coded values. You can also grab a value and say, is it between this value and an expression, uh, which is what this is, right? It's a calculated uh, value. All right. The like operator, one of my favorites. Um, I realize that's a totally geeky thing to say, but um, it's really great because sometimes you want to go and look for something, but you know that it, you're not exactly sure what the value is. And so what the um, um, you know like operator is essentially doing is saying, hey, I want to go pull information that is either begins with something, it ends with something, or it contains something. So you might have used that in Excel with a filter and say, hey, where does it begin with this, end with this, or... Um, contain this. Now you'll notice we get nothing back and this is probably a good uh, time to review the fact that SQL is not case sensitive. Um, if I write this as select lowercase or I write it as uppercase select, SQL does not care. But everything between the ticks, everything that is blue in SQL Developer, everything that is data is case sensitive. So remember that a, the name Clint and the name Clint, these are stored differently in the database. Like the capital C and the lowercase c are different characters in the database. So if I, if I actually said, you know, 
you know, is C equal to C, lowercase c? The answer is no. Um, so when um, we're looking for data and we don't get anything back, uh, let's figure out why that is. Well, so let's start with, I'm gonna just go run the select star from vendors. And the first thing I notice here is that there's a capital S and lowercase a in, so it's not in all caps. So what we can do here is, let's just change this to lowercase a n and run this again. And boom, there we go. So that was our problem, is that sometimes you, uh, you forget that the data is case sensitive. I see that mistake a lot. But what this is essentially doing is, uh, instead of saying where vendor is equal to, because equal to is an absolute kind of operator. It's like you either equal this or don't. But like is kind of saying, hey, it's, it's similar to this, right? We're looking for this pattern. And when we go in and say, you know, I can't just say like, hey, where it's like SAN, because it's, there's nothing out there, that, you know, that is absolutely equal to SAN, you know, by itself. But if I go in here and say, hey, where the first characters are S-A-N and then anything else that comes afterwards, um, that's what I'm looking for. And so that's what you'll see is that we everything that starts with S-A-N, um, but then multiple things follow afterwards. Santa Ana, San Francisco, San Diego. Um, if you also want to, uh, let's, uh, let's do something like this. Let's add a A-N-T and let's say anything that contains A-N-T. Let's run that. And sure enough, uh, there you go, right? You know, it doesn't care what comes before it. Um, it just knows that um, it um, starts with something. Uh, it just happens to start with an S, but it all of these contain an A and T. Um, let's uh, let's also try anything that ends with um, let's say anything that ends with N A, or let's go with Anna. Let's go anything that ends with Anna. Oh, that doesn't return anything. Uh, that's not a good example. Um, I wonder if we can find anything that ends with the, the word city. Yeah, here's like, sometimes you got like Oklahoma City, um, you know, Texas City, Traverse City. So it's like, hey, give me every city here that ends with the word city. Um, or, you know, here's just something we could try is let's do everything that has a space in it. So everything that has two words in it. And, and that's actually, you know, it's saying, I don't care what it starts with, it has a space and it could end with whatever. Uh, that's like a really interesting way to go and grab every city that has two words. You know, not bad. I'm really proud of myself. Um, and then uh, this other uh, operator here, or the, uh, the other um, wild card that we can use is this. I, I know that I'm going to grab a word and um, it will start with this um, and it can end with uh, whatever. But what this um, you know underscore is doing is saying, hey, I know that the first five characters is gonna be this, I, but this sixth character could be whatever. And then it's followed with an ER. And then of course the wild card here saying anything else that follows. So when you run this, what it's doing is it's showing you that um, it's going to pull. Uh, so let me just, for example, let me replace this and say everything that's got a vendor name with the word computer in it. Uh, so there's computer library, there's computer world. If I add this underscore in there, what it's going to do is it's going to also find that, hey, here's something that starts with compu. It has a different character on the sixth space, and then it has an ER that follows. So it's also finding CompuServe. Um, so you can use the like operator in a very powerful way. I find it very useful when I'm trying to look up something and I can't remember the name of it exactly. So I go in and say, well, I know that the first like, you know, I know that I can't remember it's either Annapolis or it's Anaheim or it's something like that. So you know what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in here and I'm just gonna go, I remember it's Anna something and uh, there you go, right? Or I know it starts with A-N, um, oh, it's, you know, it's Ann Arbor, it's Anaheim, right? So this is just a way to find um, data more um, kind of uh, generally. Um, the is null operator, uh, what we want to do is, you know, if you go take a look at this null sample, you'll notice that there is kind of these just dummy data that they put in here to show you how null works. Um, so each of these that have values, these are obviously not null. 
these zero values uh, are not null because null is basically considered, it's treated like a no value. It has no numeric value. It's not zero, it's blank. Um, and so you'll see here that we have two values of zero. We have other two that have values you know, greater than zero. So let's see what happens when we go into this and run this where the invoice total equals zero. Um, what will it return? Will it return both of these records and the null, or will it contain uh, you know, just the zeros? So let's see what happens. So it just returns the zeros. So it's important to understand that even though null has no value, it's not considered the same as zero. Um, but if I go in here and say, pull me everything that does not equal zero, um, it will say, OK, I'm going to give you both these values. But it did not return the null. And again, null is not treated as a number. So even if you say, hey, it's not equal to zero, it's saying, I'm going to return all the actual values. When I'm looking at like invoice total is not zero, it's going to say, well, null's not even a value. It's I'm not even going to consider if it isn't zero. It just doesn't uh, return it. So if I want to actually find null, uh, we have to say, hey, it is null. And then it will return it. Or I could add in the not operator, like this example, and what this will return is everything that is not null, which is all of these values. So the null operator, very valuable when you are um, you know, trying to find blank values. Um, but if you try to treat it as 0, remember it's not the same thing. It's not a number, it's just null. All right, so that kind of covers a lot of the where operator. The next thing I want to kind of then t jump into is the order by and the fetch. We're just going to run through these examples of how you can use order by uh, to sort your data in different ways. And there's, again, five ways we can do that. We can kind of sort from ascending to sending. You can sort by a single column or multiple column. We talked about that. You can go about ordering it by expressions, so actually a concatenation of, of, of columns. You can uh, also um, order by um, in um, not just a... Uh, expression, but a column alias because the order by is the last thing that runs, and the column alias will get assigned once that select part runs, which again does not happen at the beginning. It happens nor the, towards the end, but the order by is the last thing it runs. So we can actually add in aliases, and then we can also sort by column position. So let's dive in and let's look at this column position um, or column, uh, you know, sort. So there's a very basic uh, sort. You'll see here we have. Um, I'm going to run just without the order by first. Um, and you'll see here that it returns uh, the vendor name and the address. So what I can do is go in here and say, hey, I want to sort by the uh, vendor name. And I had a student once in class tell me, they were like, why do you keep saying sort by when it's order by? So they're used synonymously when I'm talking about it. Sort is what Excel calls it. Order by is what SQL calls it but they both mean the same thing. But you cannot use a sort by in case you wanted to know that. I have students all the time going, can you just write sort by? I don't even know if you can or not. No, you can't, right. Um, and it's interesting because sort actually shows up as a keyword or a reserved word. But if you ever want to know like what you can and can't do, just go do it. Um, so now you see here that we're sorting by vendor name. So we can actually sort by a single vendor name. Um, this next example, what we're doing is we're just showing you that, uh, so by default, when you order by something, it orders by descending. I'm sorry, ascending. I apologize. It, sort, it orders by ascending by default. If you run it uh, with this example where you add in the descending, it will sort it from Z all the way down to A. And so um, that's all you have to do. You can actually go in and use uh, an ascending, uh, I believe it's ACS. You can specify that you want it to be ascending, but you don't actually have to call it out, right? You can just, you know, it'll do it by default. And uh, you can sort by multiple columns. So you notice here, uh, we went through this in the lecture uh, or the concept uh, review, but you'll see here that we're sorting by city. Uh, I'm sorry, first by state. Uh, so you'll see Arizona, and then within this group of Arizona vendors, it will sort by city. And so all three cities are Phoenix, so it's going to, you know, there, you don't tell that there is a sort here. But then the next sort is by vendor name, and that's why you'll see AT&T, Computer Library, Wells Fargo. Um, then the next uh, group is going to be the next state, which is California. Within that, you'll see that Anaheim, Bria, and Fresno 
Uh, so we're sorting it by city. And then within Anaheim, or let's even, let's yeah, within Anaheim, you'll see that it's sorted by uh, vendor name. So Aztec and then blue. Same thing here. If you go to uh, look at this group here, you'll see it's California. And then within Fresno, it's A, B, C. And just to see how this works, if I wanted to, uh, let's go in and sort by vendor name descending. So if I run it this way, you'll see that within Fresno now, it's actually sorting the vendor names in descending. So still sorting by state and city ascending, but then sorting by vendor name descending. And if I want to play around here, I could even, let's throw in a, I could sort by state descending. So you're going to get um, Wisconsin, Virginia, Texas. Here's Pennsylvania. Um, within Pennsylvania, it's going to sort then by city ascending. So Fort comes before Philadelphia. And then within Philadelphia, it'll actually sort the vendor name descending. So you can do this in whatever way you want, but you can add in uh, any order of descending and ascending by multiple columns. You can also sort by the column alias. So um, I mentioned this in the kind of pre-class um, you know, um, concept review or in the lecture. But what we can do is we can actually sort by um, an expression or a concatenation. So what we could do is we could say, hey, I want to pull the um, you know, vendor name and the vendor city, state, and zip. But I want to sort by this actual you know, expression of this vendor city, state, and zip. And then I want to sort by vendor name. So let's just run this really quickly. Um, you'll see here that it's sorting by this column first, this whole entire expression. And then within that, it's sorting by vendor name. But if we give this an alias and we just say as address, I can then replace this whole thing and just say, hey, go sort by address. And anytime I can write code shorter, it's more readable. Uh, you know, I say take that approach. Uh, so sorting by an alias is possible. I'm going to remind you again that you cannot use the alias in a where clause. So I can't go in here and say where the address equals, you know, Anaheim, California, 92807. You cannot do that. And that's because the order of how a SQL statement runs, it runs the where clause before the select clause. The select clause actually happens at the very end. What happens is we grab the data from the table, we then filter, and then once we have filtered the data, um, then we decide what columns we're going to grab, and then at that point, um, the um, column alias is signed. Only then can we reference the column alias, and that we can do it in the order by because the order by runs last. Um, so if I wanted to, I could do this. I could probably grab this entire expression and say, hey, we're this crazy long expression equals Anaheim, California, you can do that. So this always seems to be something that trips people up is that I can use the that column alias in the order by, but I can't use it in the where clause. And I would rather use it in the where clause. Just got to understand that the SQL does not run in that order um, because it has to. It has to grab the data from the table, has to then filter the where. Then last but not least, it does the, the select and the column alias. And that's why we can use the column alias here. So just keeping that uh, I'm going to keep reminding you all that because that's something that always trips us up. So again, I just showed you how you can actually sort by an expression. Um, but what this example is showing you is that you can sort not only by an expression or concatenation, uh, like I could go sort by, you know, invoice total minus, you know, credit total. You could do that. Um, but you can also refer to columns that are in this table but are not showing up in the select. So you don't have to only sort by what's in the select. You can sort by other things that are outside of that. I mean, just to show you an example, I can even go in here and say I want to sort by vendor ID. Now you'll notice I'm only pulling the vendor name and I'm pulling the city and state, but it's not going to um, you know, sort by vendor. Uh, it's, it's sorting by vendor ID. And let's just just for the heck of it. If I go in here and add in the vendor ID, you'll see here's the vendor name, the address, and let's go sort by vendor ID descending. All right, if I take this out of the select statement, it continues to run just fine. So you can sort not only by expressions, but you can sort by columns that are not even in the actual select. And I think that's just worth pointing out because that sometimes is something people don't realize.
And the last thing is that you can sort by column position. So just like we were able to go in and sort um, by um, the address and the vendor name, you can also just say, hey, I want to sort by column one, two and then column one. And that is the same as just saying, hey, I want to go in and let me just pull this out and show you. Uh, that's the equivalent of saying, I want to sort by address and I want to sort by the vendor name. Two very similar, you know, two ways of doing it. Um, so you can do it either way. Uh, the column order by will come in handy later on when we get to something called the union statement. When we want to start compiling, uh, when I want to start piling multiple SQL statements on top of each other, but like maybe those column names are different. And so by calling out a column name, it's not going to work. So column position can be handy later on. Okay. Last but not least, I just want to walk you through the fetch, which now can replace our use of the row num pseudo column. And Fetch is, um, up to this point, I've been telling you that the order by runs last, the order by runs last, the order by runs last. Well, in Oracle 12c and later versions, they added in this new thing called the fetch. And the fetch clause basically will run after the sort has happened. So if you remember, when I go in and sort uh, my data, um, before, I was saying, hey, I want to go in and let me just for a second take this out and I'm gonna I'm just gonna run this and say, okay, I wanna select where row num is less than or equal to five. And I'm gonna go up. Oh, always remember to add your semicolon. So I'm gonna run this really quickly. And what happens is the first thing it does is it grabs the first five rows from the table and then it sorts them. So um, just remember that, right? The, if I take this order by out and just run this first part. These just happen to be the first five rows in that table. If you can't remember that, let's just go look at invoices. So you'll see here invoices for vendor 34, 34, 110, 110, 81, and here are their totals, right? So let's go run this again and just this first three lines, and you'll see, yep, those are those first five off the table. So when it, what it's doing here is it's going and grabbing this data off the table. It's saying it's grabbing the first five rows from the table. It's then deciding I'm going to go get these columns uh, from the data set, and then it sorts it. And that's why we're seeing these totals here. Um, now, uh, the only way that we were able to sort the data and then get the first five rows was to use a subquery in the in the from clause, and that it gets a little painful. So now what we're doing is we're we're introducing the statement that's going to run after the order by. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to go and grab, and I'm just going to run these first um, three lines. It's going to grab everything off the table, and it's going to sort from by invoice total. Then what the fetch is then going to say is go grab the first five rows only. If we run this. Now it just goes grabs first five rows. You know, if you want to update this to eight, sorry, and you'll see that's what it's doing. Um, if you want to offset that, and let's say I want to, um, you know, um, run. Nope, I'm not yet. I don't have my semicolons in here. Sorry. I want to offset that. So what that's doing is. So what this is doing is it's grabbing, um, in this scenario, it's going to grab the data off the invoices table, and it's going to order by invoice ID. Now, if I, um, if I take out this offset and I just run this, you'll see that the first three rows are one, two, three. But what adding in the offset does is it says, I'm going to skip these first two columns, and then after I skip them, I'm going to grab the next three. So let's watch what happens. It grabs three, four, five. And so offset is simply just moving it down and grabbing the next three. If I wanted, I could go grab the next six rows. I could offset by five. And so you'll see it starts at the sixth row and it grabs the next six rows. And so this last example is, again, just showing you that you could offset even by 100 rows. You could grab the next 1,000 rows. And if there isn't a 1,000 there isn't rows, it's just going to grab whatever's left. Um, but that's what fetch is. And I think that's a really good one to remember because there's a lot of times where I just want to grab the first 10 rows, but I want to sort the table and then grab the first 10. That's where fetch is really, really useful. 
Okay, I know that was a lot, but that kind of walks you through everything you can do with the wear clause, everything you can do with the order buy, everything you do with this awesome thing called Fetch. So um, if you have any questions after that, let us know. Um, but the, hopefully that will help you kind of draw a little bit more context and understanding from all of this uh, crazy syntax we're throwing at you. So until the next time, uh, thank you for joining us and we'll see you in the next lesson.